Talk to God, he said that we gon' make it Now it hurts and you don't have to fake it He not broken, he just rearranged it Hi beautiful people, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Rorisang Mabukwane and if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. It's great to have you in my little corner of YouTube where we speak all things adulting, career, faith, personal development and lifestyle. I know it is a mouthful but I believe that all of these topics are very very important when it comes to navigating our young adult years. So without wasting any more time, let us get straight into this video. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe and share this and be a part of the family. So today's topic, as you can tell by the title of today's video, is a very sticky topic. And we could probably debate and talk about it for so long, um, but I'm going to try and condense it into the most high level points that I believe are very relevant for a black young female trying to navigate the corporate world. This is a very sticky place to be in. And even decades into um, democracy and being a democratic country, um, we still find it difficult, and I think even beyond the borders of South Africa, we still find it difficult to navigate corporate um, and to navigate it as easily. I don't want to say easy because it's not difficult. Uh, it's not easy to navigate as it is, regardless of who you are. But um, I think it's just a bit harder for us as black females, especially young black females, to try and navigate um, the corporate world. Um, and I want to, you know, zoom in on young black females because sometimes even our male counterparts, <laughs> black males, um, because they're male, sometimes find it a bit easier. Um, and I'm using the word sometimes and I'm cautioning myself because it's not always the case, but sometimes it is easier because they just have, men just have that bravado in general. I'm generalizing here. They just have that, you know, thing. Whereas us as women, we actually have to force ourselves to have that thing. But regardless, let me not make this intro longer than it should be. Let's get into some of the things that I would like us to keep top of mind as young black females trying to navigate the corporate world. So the first thing that I'd like us to consider when trying to navigate the corporate world as a young black woman is knowing our worth. You deserve to be in those rooms. You deserve to be in those boardrooms, on those stages, running those businesses, being in executive positions, being in leadership positions. You deserve to be there. You are smart enough. You are capable enough. You are well equipped. You are knowledgeable enough. You are literally a force to be reckoned with. And if you don't see yourself like that, then it's a problem. So I want us to work on our mindset and how we see ourselves because sometimes the limitations that are set on us are actually set by us, not by society, right? So sometimes we're quick to blame society to say, as black females, we've been put in this box, but sometimes we've put ourselves in a box because we don't see ourselves as that person, you know, as that successful executive, as that successful business owner, as that successful, you know, subject matter expert in the particular field that you might find yourself in. So work on your mindset. The book of Proverbs chapter 23 says that as a man thinketh, so he is. So what we think is what we will become. What we think of ourselves is what will manifest on the outside. If we think we are smart enough, if we think we're capable enough, if we think we deserve to be in those rooms, we'll be able to walk into those rooms with the authority that has been given to us by God to walk in there and thrive and you know deliver things with success um, because we see ourselves like that. So knowing our value already makes half of the work easier walk in there even if you are faithing it till you make it you walk in there like you own that room because you do own that room humbly so you do own that room and you deserve to be there so stop treating yourself like you don't deserve to be there and once you treat yourself like you deserve to be there other people will then be able to identify that hey you are that girl and you deserve to be there the second thing that I want us to take into consideration is education. You need to be the most educated person in that room. Be the most knowledgeable person in that room. Make yourself a subject matter expert. Because unfortunately, we do have to overcompensate with our knowledge 
for us to be taken seriously within the workplace. Um, it is what it is. This is just how it is. I, I don't even want to try and explain why we have to, but you do need to be the smartest person in the room. You do need to be, let me rephrase that. Because sometimes when you're the smartest person in the room, then you're in the wrong room. Like you need to be challenged. But essentially what I'm trying to bring across is that you need to be knowledgeable about what you are doing, about what work you're doing. You need to know yourself. Um, so if that means furthering your studies, if that means taking a short course, if that means subscribing to newsletters where you're getting um, daily or regular, uh, regular updates on what is happening in your industry, then make that it, you know, be the knowledgeable person that is a go-to for people because that's when people will actually start valuing you, valuing your mind, valuing your thoughts, valuing your time because they know that you know what you're talking about. And also they won't be able to pull one over your head because you know what you're talking about and you're woke. So if you don't know stuff, it's easy for you to come across as ignorant. It's um, easy for you to come across as, you know, ill-equipped, um, as, you know, not good enough to be there. But once you know your stuff and you have an answer when they ask you something, then you are that girl, you know? So it goes back to knowing your worth, right? Because by educating yourself and continuously upskilling yourself you're increasing your worth as well right so it moves from then it being a mindset thing to it being what is the work that i can actually produce with my mind and my hands by being a subject matter expert in the industry that i currently work in the next thing i want us to consider as we navigate to the corporate world is knowing and discovering our voice and actually using our voice because you do have a voice i'm using one right now you have a voice, but it's up to you how you use it. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't mean that you need to be the loudest person in the room. I don't mean that you need to be the most, you know, out there person. Personally, I'm not. I'm really like the most introverted person you will ever see. And I only usually speak when spoken to unless I actually need to, you know, get out there. But use your voice. You have it for a reason, right? And make sure that everything you say with your voice is valuable. If you don't have anything valuable to say and any positive input to give, rather keep quiet. If you're in a meeting, make sure that you are listening from the beginning to the end so that you can have something valuable to say when they say anything else from someone else. You know, so make sure that whatever you utter with your mouth is something of value so that you know that those words stick in people's brains as your Rory said that, you know, perhaps it's something to consider as we embark on this project. Your maybe we should set up a follow up session because she really touched on a very important point that we hadn't considered before. And sometimes you can't say valuable things if going back to my previous point about educating yourself. If you aren't educated or if you aren't well informed about what is happening within your industry, so read up so that when you open your mouth, things of sense come out of your mouth. That way people are able to listen and engage with you in an effective manner because you are commanding any room that you talk in because everything that you say is valuable. The next thing that I want us to consider as we navigate the corporate world as young black women is that everything is figure outable. I posted this on my Instagram a few weeks ago that literally if you put your mind to something, you can figure it out. If you can't figure it out by yourself, ask the relevant questions, ask the difficult questions, take that extra time to do the research because essentially once you have invested all that time in trying to figure it out, some light, some light will be there at the end of the tunnel. So everything is figure out, figure outable. Um, and with this, also don't be so hard on yourself to know everything overnight. Give yourself the time to figure stuff out. Obviously, if there are time pressures and so forth, the conditions would be different. But give yourself that time so that you can know the intricate details of whatever you're trying to unpack. Correct. Right? Um, and I think a lot of now that I'm re you know speaking, I'm realizing a lot of the points that I'm bringing across have to do with knowledge, like be so smart that they can't even doubt your intelligence, you know, so figure it out. Take the time on a weekend if you need to. Yes, it sucks. And yes, you want to see your friends and all of that. But be the person that takes time out on a Sunday evening to read up, 
to understand when they say a specific term and you don't understand it for example i work um, within the payments industry and um, they use a lot of terms like APIs and, you know, currency stuff. And yes, I have a lot of that vocabulary from my studies um, as a BCom finance and an investment management student um, or graduate. But sometimes you only learn these things when in practice, right? And you have to figure that stuff out on the job. Take the time to figure it out. Take an extra hour out of your day instead of watching Instagram or uh, instead of watching Netflix and scrolling on Instagram, take the time to actually figure out what they're talking about. Like figure it out. Um, and anything and everything you put your mind to is figure outable. Like I said, so don't be hard on yourself. It comes with time. You won't be a subject matter expert in weeks, months, sometimes even years. Sometimes it takes a while, you know, most times it takes a while because all the industries that we work in are so vast like you can't know like you'll never be in a position where you know everything so there's always something to figure out i don't know if that makes sense i'm sure it does it makes sense in my head but try and take the time to figure it all out so the next point i want to touch on i won't speak about it in great detail because i actually have a separate video on my channel about it but work on your personal brand what are you known for are you known as the person who gets stuff done? Are you known as the person who knows her stuff? Are you known as the person who takes herself seriously and brings across professionalism, delivers with excellence? Or are you someone who they know that we're going to ask Rui to do something and it's going to take six months to be done? So work on your personal brand. Your personal brand is essentially how people perceive you. And sometimes it's how you perceive yourself as well. What are you known for? What are your strengths that you're known for in your industry? Bring those across. Build um, rapport. Make sure that you build a name for yourself. Work on your personal brand so that when you're um, spoken about, even in rooms that you're not in, they're able to say, yeah, that's the girl who's doing the most in this industry. She is a trailblazer. She is known for disrupting traditions she is known for going against the status quo she is known for making sure that she knows everything that we're working on she is known for being an organized person she is known for some um as someone who is always looking presentable she is known as someone who commands a room when she enters she is known as someone who engages with you and doesn't multitask when you are speaking to her what are you known for in your space what are you known for in your corporate environment that you find yourself in work on the personal brand because i think the top two things here would be knowing your worth but then also knowing your brand because at the beginning i spoke about how you see yourself the personal brand speaks to how other people are going to see you as well right and once those are at a hundred percent the rest of the stuff you can kind of just wing as you go um yeah let me stop there, but I will link um, the personal branding video down below in the description box so that you guys can have a watch of that after you finish this video. You guys can go over and watch that so that you can get practical um, tips on how to build your personal brand and how to improve it, especially in the workplace. The next thing I'd like to touch on is friends in the workplace. No one is your friend, or let me, let me say not everyone is your friend. Be kind, be friendly, be compassionate, be open, but no one is your friend. We all want a piece of the pie. We all want a piece of the pie and whoever's going to get to it fast enough will make sure they do by anything, uh, you know, they'll do anything by any means necessary to make sure that they get the biggest slice of the pie. So if that means using stuff against you that you've said, because anything you say can and will be used against you in this courtroom. <laughs> anything you say, um, whether you're engaging in gossip, whether it's actually something that is valuable, they'll remember it and say, but Rory said A, B, and C. What do you guys think? But Rory said this one doesn't wait, but doesn't dress well. What do you guys think? Anything you say will be used against you. So yes, be friendly, but remember that these people are not your friends. After work drinks on a Friday does not mean you guys are friends. Calling this person and speaking to them about your family or giving them a shoulder to cry on does not mean that they're your friends. Maybe you can be a friend to them, but 
don't get it twisted like just because you're a friend to them and they can count on you and lean on you and open up to you doesn't mean it should be a two-way street and i know there are exceptions some of the greatest friendships are built within the workplace so i know there are exceptions to this but essentially just stay alert keep asleep with one eye open because everyone wants a piece of the pie and the person who is the most strategic will get the biggest piece of the pie. So be careful what you say, be careful what you do, be careful how you treat people, but also remember that not everyone is your friend. The last thing I want to touch on before I close out the video is to not relax. You can't afford to relax as a young black woman in corporate. You cannot afford to take a chill pill, sit back and watch things unfold. You actually need to be at the helm of your career. I. You can't just relax, you can't afford to. And somebody is standing there in the background waiting for you to mess up. And even if your good things outweigh the bad, that one small thing could taint a lot for you. So do not relax, you can't afford to relax. And also with this in mind, my last point would be, the enemy is waiting for you to mess up so that he can prove people wrong, so that he can go to God and be like, huh, that girl that you put in that big boardroom, messed up and we can't let him have the last laugh we as children of god need to have that last laugh so make sure you're putting in the work um because yes we can have faith um and we should have faith that god um you know will favor us and open doors for us and give us opportunities but faith without works is dead you also need to put in the work in order for him to be able to trust you with more right because you can only you only prove that you can be trusted with more by the fruit that you produce with what you currently have, right? So don't give the enemy an opportunity to say, you gave them that executive position, they went and messed it up, baby boy, baby girl, you know, I don't know. But don't let the enemy have the last laugh. Don't do it. Don't, don't do it. So don't relax. Because when you relax, that's when he comes in like a roaring lion to come and eat, steal, kill, destroy. So you don't want that. You don't you don't want to give him any ammunition to use against you. And I think this goes beyond just corporate, but just in life in general. As a child of God, um, don't allow the enemy to put or to be able to have ammunition over you. Like you should be the one making him nervous when you wake up in the morning and your feet hit the ground you know so let us be those type of women where when we wake up when we are in our prayer closets when we are going forth and walking in the authority that god has given us to walk in that the enemy is trembling because he is so scared that everything that we touch will turn to gold so be that girl don't let the enemy have the last laugh so with that we've come to the end of today's video and i know like i mentioned at the beginning that we could talk about this for days on end so let's continue the conversation in the comment section i'd like to hear your thoughts about some of the things that you keep top of mind when trying to navigate this work world as a young black corporate individual or as a young black business individual you can use both of these um i mean both of these are both relevant with regards to everything that we spoke about today so with that don't forget to comment like subscribe and share this with anybody and everybody who you think might need it with so much love and so much light from me to you have an amazing rest of the day stay safe and god bless bye guys